Antony van Leeuwenhoek, Wikipedia article audio. Antony Phillips van Leeuwenhoek, UK, 24 October 1632 August 26, 1723 was a Dutch businessman and scientist in the golden age of Dutch science and technology. A largely self-taught man in science, he is commonly known as the father of microbiology, and one of the first microscopists and microbiologists. Van Leeuwenhoek is best known for his pioneering work in microscopy and for his contributions toward the establishment of microbiology as a scientific discipline. Raised in Delft, in the Dutch Republic, Van Leeuwenhoek worked as a draper in his youth and founded his own shop in 1654. He became well recognized in municipal politics and developed an interest in lens making. In the 1670s, he started to explore microbial life with his microscope. This was one of the notable achievements of the golden age of Dutch exploration and discovery. Early Life and Career Microscopic Study Using single-lensed microscopes of his own design, Van Leeuwenhoek was the first to experiment with microbes which he originally referred to as animalcules. Through his experiments, he was the first to relatively determine their size. Most of the animalcules are now referred to as unicellular organisms, although he observed multicellular organisms in pond water. He was also the first to document microscopic observations of muscle fibers, bacteria, spermatozoa, red blood cells, crystals in gouty tophi, and blood flow in capillaries. Van Leeuwenhoek did not write any books, his discoveries came to light through correspondence with the Royal Society, which published his letters. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was born in Delft, Dutch Republic, on October 24, 1632. On November 4, he was baptized as Thonies. His father, Philips Antonis van Leeuwenhoek, was a basket maker who died when Antony was only five years old. His mother, Margaretha, came from a well-to-do brewer's family. She remarried Jacob Jens Molagen, a painter. Antony had four older sisters, Margriet, Geertruit, Nielch, and Katharina. When he was around 10 years old his stepfather died. He attended school in Warmond for a short time before being sent to live in Bent Huizen with his uncle, an attorney. At the age of 16 he became a bookkeeper's apprentice at a linen draper's shop in Amsterdam, which was owned by the Scott William Davidson. Van Leeuwenhoek left there after six years. Van Leeuwenhoek married Barbara de May in July 1654, with whom he fathered one surviving daughter, Maria. That same year he returned to Delft, where he would live and study for the rest of his life. He opened a draper's shop, which he ran throughout the 1650s. His wife died in 1666, and in 1671, Van Leeuwenhoek remarried to Cornelius Walmius with whom he had no children. His status in Delft had grown throughout the years. In 1660 he received a lucrative job as Chamberlain for the Assembly Chamber of the Delft Sheriffs in the City Hall, a position which he would hold for almost 40 years. In 1669 he was appointed as a land surveyor by the court of Holland, at some time he combined it with another municipal job, being the official wine gauger of Delft and in charge of the city wine imports and taxation. Van Leeuwenhoek was a contemporary of another famous Delft citizen, the painter Johannes Vermeer, who was baptized just four days earlier. 
It has been suggested that he is the man portrayed in two Vermeer paintings of the late 1660s, The Astronomer and The Geographer, but others argue that there appears to be little physical similarity. Because they were both relatively important men in a city with only 24,000 inhabitants, it is likely that they were at least acquaintances. Van Leeuwenhoek acted as the executor of Vermeer's will after the painter died in 1675. While running his draper shop, Van Leeuwenhoek wanted to see the quality of the thread better than possible using magnifying lenses then available. He began to develop an interest in lens making, although few records exist of his early activity. Van Leeuwenhoek's interest in microscopes and a familiarity with glass processing led to one of the most significant, and simultaneously well-hidden, technical insights in the history of science. Recognition by the Royal Society By placing the middle of a small rod of soda-lime glass in a hot flame, Van Leeuwenhoek could pull the hot section apart to create two long whiskers of glass. Then, by reinserting the end of one whisker into the flame, he could create a very small, high-quality glass sphere. These spheres became the lenses of his microscopes, with the smallest spheres providing the highest magnifications. After developing his method for creating powerful lenses and applying them to the study of the microscopic world, Van Leeuwenhoek introduced his work to his friend the prominent Dutch physician Rainier de Graaf. When the Royal Society in London published the groundbreaking work of an Italian lens maker in their journal Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, de Graaf wrote to the editor of the journal, Henry Oldenburg, with a ringing endorsement of Van Leeuwenhoek's microscopes which, he claimed, far surpass those which we have hitherto seen. In response, in 1673 the Society published a letter from Van Leeuwenhoek that included his microscopic observations on mold, bees, and lice. Scientific fame Van Leeuwenhoek's work fully captured the attention of the Royal Society, and he began corresponding regularly with the Society regarding his observations. At first he had been reluctant to publicize his findings, regarding himself as a businessman with little scientific, artistic, or writing background, but de Graaf urged him to be more confident in his work. By the time Van Leeuwenhoek died in 1723, he had written some 190 letters to the Royal Society, detailing his findings in a wide variety of fields centered on his work in microscopy. He only wrote letters in his own colloquial Dutch, he never published a proper scientific paper in Latin. He strongly preferred to work alone, distrusting the sincerity of those who offered their assistance. The letters were translated into Latin or English by Henry Oldenburg, who had learned Dutch for this very purpose. Despite the initial success of Van Leeuwenhoek's relationship with the Royal Society, soon relations became severely strained. In 1676, his credibility was questioned when he sent the Royal Society a copy of his first observations of microscopic single-celled organisms. Previously, the existence of single-celled organisms was entirely unknown. Thus, even with his established reputation with the Royal Society as a reliable observer, his observations of microscopic life were initially met with some skepticism. Eventually, in the face of Van Leeuwenhoek's insistence, the Royal Society arranged for Alexander Petrie, minister to the English Reformed Church in Delft, Benedict Hahn, at that time Lutheran minister at Delft, and Henrik Cordes, then Lutheran minister at The Hague, accompanied by Sir Robert Gordon and four others, to determine whether it was in fact Van Leeuwenhoek's ability to observe and reason clearly, 
or perhaps, the Royal Society's theories of life that might require reform. Finally in 1677, Van Leeuwenhoek's observations were fully acknowledged by the Royal Society. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was elected to the Royal Society in February 1680 on the nomination of William Kroon, a then prominent physician. Van Leeuwenhoek was taken aback by the nomination, which he considered a high honour, although he did not attend the induction ceremony in London, nor did he ever attend a Royal Society meeting. Techniques and Discoveries by the end of the 17th century, Van Leeuwenhoek had a virtual monopoly on microscopic study and discovery. His contemporary Robert Hooke, an early microscope pioneer, bemoaned that the field had come to rest entirely on one man's shoulders. He was visited over the years by many notable individuals, such as the Russian Tsar Peter the Great. To the disappointment of his guests, Van Leeuwenhoek refused to reveal the cutting-edge microscopes he relied on for his discoveries, instead showing visitors a collection of average quality lenses. Legacy and Recognition An experienced businessman, Van Leeuwenhoek believed that if his simple method for creating the critically important lens was revealed, the scientific community of his time would likely disregard or even forget his role in microscopy. He therefore allowed others to believe that he was laboriously spending most of his nights and free time grinding increasingly tiny lenses to use in microscopes, even though this belief conflicted both with his construction of hundreds of microscopes and his habit of building a new microscope whenever he chanced upon an interesting specimen that he wanted to preserve. He made about 200 microscopes with a different magnification. Notable Quotes Van Leeuwenhoek was visited by Leibniz, William III of Orange and his wife, Mary II of England and the Burgemeister Johann Huidekeper of Amsterdam, the latter being very interested in collecting and growing plants for the Hortus Botanicus Amsterdam, and all gazed at the tiny creatures. In 1698, Van Leeuwenhoek was invited to visit the Tsar Peter the Great on his boat. On this occasion Van Leeuwenhoek presented the Tsar an ill viewer, so Peter could study blood circulation whenever he wanted. Antony van Leeuwenhoek made more than 500 optical lenses. He also created at least 25 single-lens microscopes, of differing types, of which only nine have survived. These microscopes were made of silver or copper frames, holding handmade lenses. Those that have survived are capable of magnification up to 275 times. It is suspected that Van Leeuwenhoek possessed some microscopes that could magnify up to 500 times. Although he has been widely regarded as a dilettante or amateur, his scientific research was of remarkably high quality. The single-lens microscopes of Van Leeuwenhoek were relatively small devices, the largest being about 5 cm long. They are used by placing the lens very close in front of the eye, while looking in the direction of the sun. The other side of the microscope had a pin, where the sample was attached in order to stay close to the lens. There were also three screws to move the pin and the sample along three axes, one axis to change the focus and the two other axes to navigate through the sample. Van Leeuwenhoek maintained throughout his life that there are aspects of microscope construction which I only keep for myself, in particular his most critical secret of how he made the lenses. For many years no one was able to reconstruct Van Leeuwenhoek's design techniques, however, in 1957, C.L. Stong used thin glass thread fusing instead of polishing, and successfully created some working samples of a Van Leeuwenhoek design microscope. 
Such a method was also discovered independently by A. Mosolov and A. Belkin at the Russian Novosibirsk State Medical Institute. Van Leeuwenhoek used samples and measurements to estimate numbers of microorganisms in units of water. He also made good use of the huge advantage provided by his method. He studied a broad range of microscopic phenomena, and shared the resulting observations freely with groups such as the British Royal Society. Such work firmly established his place in history as one of the first and most important explorers of the microscopic world. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was one of the first people to observe cells, much like Robert Hooke. Van Leeuwenhoek's main discoveries are In 1687, van Leeuwenhoek reported his research on the coffee bean. He roasted the bean, cut it into slices and saw a spongious interior. The bean was pressed, and an oil appeared. He boiled the coffee with rain water twice and set it aside. Notes Like Robert Boyle and Nicholas Hart Soeker, Van Leeuwenhoek was interested in dried cochineal, trying to find out if the dye came from a berry or an insect. Antony van Leeuwenhoek's religion was Dutch Reformed Calvinist. He often referred with reverence to the wonders God designed in making creatures great and small. He believed that his amazing discoveries were merely further proof of the great wonder of God's creation. In Fusoria, in 1674, Bacteria, in 1683, the vacuole of the cell, Spermatozoa, in 1677, the banded pattern of muscular fibers, in 1682. By the end of his life, Van Leeuwenhoek had written approximately 560 letters to the Royal Society and other scientific institutions concerning his observations and discoveries. Even during the last weeks of his life, Van Leeuwenhoek continued to send letters full of observations to London. The last few contained a precise description of his own illness. He suffered from a rare disease, an uncontrolled movement of the midriff, which now is named Van Leeuwenhoek's disease. He died at the age of 90 on August 26, 1723, and was buried four days later in the Uday Kirk in Delft. In 1981, the British microscopist Brian J. Ford found that Van Leeuwenhoek's original specimens had survived in the collections of the Royal Society of London. They were found to be of high quality, and all were well preserved. Ford carried out observations with a range of single-lens microscopes, adding to our knowledge of Van Leeuwenhoek's work. Ford, as a Leeuwenhoek expert, wrote of him. Sources With regard to Leeuwenhoek's importance in history of microbiology and science in general, British biochemist Nick Lane has written. The Antony van Leeuwenhoek Hospital in Amsterdam, named after van Leeuwenhoek, is specialized in oncology. In 2004, a public poll in the Netherlands to determine the greatest Dutchman named Van Leeuwenhoek the fourth greatest Dutchman of all time. On October 24, 2016, Google commemorated the 384th anniversary of Van Leeuwenhoek's birth with a doodle that depicted his discovery of little animals or animalcules, now known as bacteria. Leeuwenhoek Medal, Leeuwenhoek Lecture Leeuwenhoek, Leeuwenhoekia, Leeuwenhoekia, and Leeuwenhoekila are named after him.